Yo, what is good, NYU? This is the Silence Behind the Violets. We are here for episode two, guest number one. Kai, who are we going to be talking with today? We're talking with Ella Spathling, uh, one of the stars of our women's volleyball program, our final four women's volleyball program. Uh, Spath came in last year, uh, transferred here from Division One San Diego State. Came with a bang. All-American last year, first team All-UA. This year, All-Region 4, All-UAA again. A huge part of the Violets' awesome season this year. So, Spath, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, um, there's one podcast that Kai and I listen to a lot. It's, uh, what is it, the Knuckleheads podcast? Is that that? That, is that where they real ask ones. That? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm-hmm. the one that they, that they ask this following question. So, it's hosted by a couple of former NBA guys. And it's um, it's about, like, rookies when they first get to the nba and it's like oh like what was your welcome to the nba moment like who was the first one to like bust your ass so like for you um what was your welcome to college moment like because the the pace of play the strength of play obviously in college is so much stronger than like high school across the board so I'm curious on on hearing what yours was yeah okay so <laughs> let me just scooch in um <laughs> Well, so my first experience, I had to get there in July so that we could train and take summer school. So I had gotten there July 8th, and immediately we started training. We had 6 a.m. lift every day while doing summer school. And so just like trying to get into that was interesting and having these basically made up classes where our academic advisors would force us to do our online classes. It was mm. super weird. Mm. And then Basically, when the seniors were like, oh, okay, well, you have to pass this running test to get all of your gear and be able to play. <laughs> and they all oh. talked about this running test, and it was like this big thing built up in my head. And it was basically you had to run down and back the basketball court in nine seconds, and you did that 25 times. In the first 10, you had a seven-second seven break. This next 10, you had a five-second break. In the last five, you had a three-second break. And then you had a two minute break and then you did that whole thing two more times. So a total of 75 lines. And if you didn't pass it, you have to keep running it until you passed it and that, or you wouldn't get your gear. And I remember the first time we were practicing with our lift trainer and I was running next to him. I'm, I'm like a decent runner. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not awful, but like <laughs> sprinting, I can't do like a mile. I'm there, but we're doing it and we're on like, 11 and my legs start to feel like jello and I'm like Eddie I can't do it and I'm like Eddie like really and he's like do it like get on the line and then I start like crying as I'm running (laughs) and I'm like I'm gonna pass out like and I have a history of fainting so I was like really trying to play into that and so I was like I'm gonna pass out I can't do it and then I saw the older girls like sitting down and I was like they can't do it like I can't do it and then well that was also someone who like should have medically retired so there's some differences but basically me crying in front of my whole team after running about like 11 lines was my welcome to school (laughs) what a first impression yeah 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 it's really really good to show everyone that gotta get that gear though you know (laughs) but i did and then the joke what not the joke but the worst thing is is that when it actually came time for the test we only had to do one round of 25 and i was so nervous (laughs) but you know it's okay i got my gear (laughs) Yeah, it all worked out. It all worked, it all worked out. out. Yeah, yeah. No, it was good. exactly. Um, speaking of that, so of course that was at San Diego State. That was the D one <laughs> experience. But coming over here to NYU, Division three, uh, still you know super competitive on all that. But just wonder if you can kind of compare the Division one, Division three experience and what you, what you've kind of learned seeing both sides of it. Yeah, um, this question has been very fun within the past I'm two sure. years. <laughs> I've um, with a lot of recruits, I've talked about this, and even people who are considering coming to D3 from D1, I think there are a lot of differences that, like, if I start, like, I can keep mm-hmm. going. But really, I think the one that's most outstanding is how much the people at D3 really want to be there mm-hmm. and want to pursue other things. And I feel like when you're in that D1 bubble, like, I think it's, like, Everyone obviously really cares about the sport. Like, no one's there if they don't love it. But I think it's more, that's more it, and, like, getting my degree. Whereas here, it's, like, people are, like, having companies. Like, people have Mm. internships. Like, they're Mm -hmm. doing all these other things that is just, like, adding on to, like, them as a volleyball player or whatever, Mm -hmm. athletics. And so I think that's the biggest difference in the freedom to do all these other cool opportunities within D3. And especially Coach Brown loves to – sure that we have that just because it is so unique to NYU too. 
Yeah, definitely. So the decision to actually come over to NYU, what was a little bit of your decision making process? What did that process actually look like? Who did the, who were the conversation or what were the conversations that you had with who? You know, what what um, what really went into that? Um, so basically, so I had redshirt my freshman year at San Diego State, so I didn't play at all. Um, and then I had a new coach my sophomore year and I was really trying to, you know, like get in the mix and see where things could go. But yeah. really, um, our relationship, we just did not see eye to eye. And um, I just disagreed with a lot of the ways that he ran the program. And obviously, what can I do? I'm a sophomore yeah, exactly. in college. Yeah, like, so. there, there's nothing you can do. Um, but I, I mean, I did get a lot better. That doesn't really matter. But um, sure. the thing is, is I was... I was just really unhappy and I think also like having it be COVID was an added layer like yeah. I would take class on my computer go to practice for five hours and if that wasn't productive or good I would be a little upset so mm -hmm. anyways so I was basically I was totally fine with like just quitting and being a normal student or a NARP as they say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, feel you. I was okay with it and but then also I had always wanted to live on the East Coast because my dad is from Boston. Um, oh, cool. And then I'd always been in California. I've never experienced winter. And I was like, that'd be kind of fun. Like, try it out. Um, does, does it still feel that way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, has its ups and downs, yeah, yeah. for sure. But, <laughs> um, so then basically I was just, I wanted to find a school that had um, the same program that I was like studying in and had a higher ranking, which is kind of... Mm not the best thing but like uh, since San Diego State the international business was ranked like eighth in the country I was like I don't want to go somewhere where it would then be like a worse program since I want to do this so mm -hmm. I like wrote down all the schools that had that program and NYU was second in the world because it's Stern which I'm actually not in but it doesn't matter um, <laughs> <laughs> but basically um, I never really considered NYU because I think I said in one of my other it's just like it's such like a dream like movie school where it doesn't For seem sure. real like yeah. it's <laughs> like pe actual people don't go there you right. know what I mean like it's I think we feel working here <laughs> yeah like, it's so like I don't like it doesn't it's so corny but it feels like a same, like I'm like oh like yeah but so and then I, there were other schools that I wanted to go to and then I was emailing doing the whole like recruiting process that I had done in high school which was All over so again. much oh, fun yeah, that, yeah. yeah no it was like Jeez. really good Second I actually time. loved doing it yeah, um, it's like yeah anyways so then I had talked to coach Brown actually I emailed him mm. and I emailed the wrong email and I was like damn like this NYU <laughs> coach like didn't even email me back yeah, like damn like D3 really doesn't want me yeah. um and then I like got the right email and then I emailed him and then he responded pretty quickly and he was like yeah we can set up a zoom and then mm -hmm. he just started like talking about the program like really selling it and I was like yeah like I don't really know right now um what I'm doing because I had another school that I wanted to go to and I was going pretty far in the recruiting process with them um and then basically it just <laughs> um it didn't work out and I also coach provided me to talk with Abby Osmus mm -hmm. our queen and Gretchen yeah, yeah. and it was funny because I was during my I was working on finals like studying at a coffee shop in San Diego and it was actually like outside and it was right by the airport which was poor planning on my part like I was on this zoom with them and every five minutes an airplane yeah would come over and I would just go on mute and they're like talking I'm like yeah mm-hmm no for sure like, <laughs> I live right next to the yeah. and those planes is wow no I was like yeah, yeah no uh-huh and I like had absolutely no idea what they were saying <laughs> um and everything I had like looked up on NYU volleyball like on YouTube like all the film was kind of coach needs to change this but like basically it was like their last game against Emory mm -hmm. like a couple years ago when they won one set and like got destroyed yeah. and <laughs> the other three sorry NYU <laughs> alums um but <laughs> then I was like oh gosh like what is it like what am I coming into type of thing um but then basically since I whatever my other opportunity didn't work out then I was like okay like I'm coming to NYU, like, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. Coach Brown was like, are you sure? Well, because actually I was talking to his friend who's a fellow coach at another school, like, nearby, and okay. he was he had offered or whatever, and Coach was like, are you sure you want to come? Like, I know you have that offer. Like, maybe you should go there. I was like, <laughs> I want to come to NYU. Like, Damn, Andrew. <laughs> I was like, I want to come to NYU. He's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I applied, and 
it was a long process, but then I got in like June. That is a very long winded way nah, I mean, of my transfer story, story but though. there you have it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you were talking about Andrew selling it though. What were, yeah. what were some things like that he brought up? <laughs> uh, you know, just, I'll just like go off the top of my head from sure, like yeah. all of our recruiting, mm -hmm. um, our Mercer. Mercer isn't top one and it will be done by this year, but I think every time I don't even remember him promising it to me, actually, but I mm. could have just, like, also yeah. not been really present. But, yeah, like... A plane flew by. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, I think it was Mercer and then, I don't know, just, like, opportunities to work with other companies and, like, have that flexibility. Stunning abroad, big one, um, that we were going to win UAA champs and, like, be really good, which we did so, last yeah. year. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did in the regular championship whatever yeah. but um so yeah those were some of the things but he was he was just like super cool like I think what also really drew me to NYU was coach Brown and that I had had a long history of kind of um different types of coaches like mm. very I mean I'm I'm used to having coaches that are really vocal and really harsh and like mm -hmm. you know if you're messing up like they'll yell at you which you know, comes with its benefits because you understand like what's going on and yep. where you're messing up. But then it's also like, okay, like I'm, I'm a pathetic piece of, shit, you know, like <laughs> type of thing. Like you know, so like it like goes back and forth. The positive reinforcement. Yeah, goes yeah, a long yeah. Way. It so goes like, a long way. Coach Brown talking to me like I was a normal person and like mm. like yeah, you know yeah. just like having more of a conversation mm -hmm. was sure. really refreshing, especially from the coach that I had just had. So I was like, wow, like this is really nice. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, and that's also what I say to a lot of people when they come on like recruiting, I'm just like recruiting trips. I did not finish that word. Um, but like <laughs> if, um, like D3 to D1 again, it's just like D3, like they really care about you as like a human, like you're so much more than just an athlete. And I think that's mm -hmm. like tying into what I said earlier and that D1, it's kind of like you're expected to do everything and just kind of like shut up and go with it. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, you have some resources, but still it's like your coaches aren't, I don't know. I haven't had a coach. I haven't heard of a coach and I'd be so happy to meet one, but like that really wants you to like do so well all around at a high D1 level. But also that's just from my peers experience and my experience. Yeah. So obviously biased, but yeah. Okay. okay. So, I mean, you talked about like the actual playing side of things like D1 versus D3 and then the experience for that, but like the actual lifestyle experience, like what's life been like in the city? Because we were talking a little bit before the cameras started rolling about how you'd only been to New York City once. So talk about that first time and then talk about what it's actually been like living here. Yeah, so I mean, as we were talking earlier, I'd only been to New York um, for a family trip. We were like, like I said, my dad's from the East Coast. So we like visited his friend who lived in Crown Heights and yeah. he had repurposed a store into like their house. And I thought it was so cool. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like living in a city. Yeah. Um, it's not very Brooklyn. Knowing, it's yeah, very like, Brooklyn. Like, like not right. knowing a single thing about where I was. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my gosh. And they're like, mm -hmm. there's people taking Right. You know, like <laughs> it's, you know, and so I really had no idea. And like we had gone to Times Square, you know, Dylan's candy bar did the whole thing. Oh, of course. And of course. I was like, I was like, oh, my gosh. But I never really had that. Like, I love New York. Like, I feel like some mm -hmm. people after they visit were like, I love it. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, no, it's cool. Like, yeah. and I, some people hate it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's cool. But like, I'm not like, wow, like I need to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and then like moving here. I think so when I transferred, I got in in. July like end of June and so I was trying to figure out what I was going to do like living wise and everyone was like yeah you're in Union Square I was like I don't know what any of this means yeah. like I'm, yeah people say so like like matter of factly like name yeah. dropping and you're like bro I have no context like, I have no. no basis yeah when I first got here like and I was meeting all the girls on the team they were like yeah like 12th blah 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 like talking about all the norms they're like Lipton, yeah, it's on like whatever, like I don't even watch it, Square Park West or something. <laughs> and like, um, right. not me knowing. Okay, anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, I was really confused. But so when I was sure. deciding if I should like find an apartment or go into dorms, like I was like, I just don't know where anything is. And I was like so scared of living alone in the city and not knowing anyone really. So then I just like went into the dorms and I was living in Carlisle Court <laughs> for uh -huh. a year with yeah. Jenny Walker. <laughs> okay. And Shout out to Jenny. Yeah. yeah. 
it was actually the most atrocious place I've ever lived. And Word. Um, <laughs> I don't recommend NYU right. housing to anyone. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I don't know if I'll get banned. But you anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it was like I was walking to a movie one time and I was like, it was a Saturday night and I was like in my sweatsuit because I was mm. going to a movie. And this homeless man just like hits me with his bag. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> like I don't okay. I just like was not I didn't do anything to you like yeah. but I you know I don't know or it was like my mom sending me like all the articles about like stabbings of and course, people like right. being pushed yeah. off and yeah. she's like be really careful like this is your stop like yeah. I think that's where I was like okay like I guess we're like we're here but mm-hmm. well you mentioned that about the homeless man I was just wondering because we asked about your welcome to college moment okay. was there something else even that was like a welcome to New York City moment mm-hmm you know, oh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry. So as you guys know, we practice in Brooklyn. Yes. Um, so we take the subway every day. We love this. Actually, it involves Chloe. Um, so it's the beginning <laughs> of the year. Camera like, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have my AirPods in. I'm, like, getting used to the city. Like, I don't really, like, understand anything, obviously. And I'm, like, obviously. blasting my music. Like, <laughs> I don't know anything. And, in a different world. And Chloe. Yeah. There's this, like, we're all on the train because this is still the beginning of the season. I still don't know how to use the trains. Oh, another one is when I had a panic attack not knowing how to get to Brooklyn. It was really embarrassing. I love that for you. Yeah, it was, like, really, <laughs> really times. humbling. <laughs> Anyways, so we're, like, on the train, and Chloe's sitting across from me, and there's this man to the right of her, like, there's the railing or whatever, and he's by the doors, and he's, like, looking to her. And she's, like going like this to like show that he's like staring at her and I was like ah like, <laughs> I do like a little TikTok dance I was like that's hey, Chloe yeah. like, and then he's like you put that egg in like pieces of <laughs> you're so spoiled or whatever and talking like NYU and I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> she's like no look and he was like yeah look and I was like oh my gosh <sighs> so that was kind of a good one and I still get roasted for that to this day <laughs> <laughs> so that's that was me not knowing a single thing um, I love that. when I first got here. Yeah. Yeah. You probably felt like a freshman when you came here. Though. Yeah, Seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, not knowing where to live. Not, I mean, you only got a small group of friends, Yeah, you know, to start. Small friends. Yeah. Um, Shout yeah, out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Few friends. Um, yeah, yeah no, it was it was definitely interesting coming here. I think transferring as a junior, mm-hmm. like I just kind of rose my, the shit myself last year and I'd be like, I'm old as f- and I'm hanging out with freshmen. Um <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know if I want that. But anyways, <laughs> um, I mean, nah. Like um, you, you feel that way sometimes. No, like, dad. Yeah, yeah. Like I was just yeah, like just as an actual college student. I was like, yeah. well, also like NYU. Like I, I when I'm on these recruit talks, like I really try and sell. I'm like, yeah, it's like so easy to meet people, but it's like really like, well, gee, it's kind of hard. Like yeah, it can be difficult. Like, Most for New York City in general. Yeah, honestly. like yeah. no, especially because mm-hmm. I was talking to my um my family friend who moved to Bed Stuy or whatever, and she didn't go to school. She went to UW, and mm-hmm. she's like, bro, but like going moving to New York and like not being in school is a whole nother level of like trying mm-hmm. to meet people. So I think like that is the blessing in disguise of NYU and that it's like it does seem more challenging but really like it's easy once you just like put the extra effort out but like coming in like it was definitely really weird um I was definitely very nervous but eventually found some cool people and it was fine but yeah like learning all about all the spots to go to and like what's okay what's not was like a really funny Mm. experience but now you know I've a god complex and i need to like shut it off when i go see my sister so i was gonna say I assume yeah. when you go back to it's california nice. it's like yeah no <laughs> well it's actually now salt lake city my parents moved ah. there so oh, it's like even worse because i'm like oh my god yeah. like, <laughs> what could are we, never what do are we doing that. is that where you're going home in a couple of weeks yeah <laughs> um well on the note like so now that you've been here for a couple of years um do you like it enough or do you feel like you want to stay after school absolutely oh, i love yeah. it here i mean it's mm. just like so fun i mean yeah, the winter is kind of tough, and like sure. I you like. Your puffer jacket. I mean, like yeah. I did, mm-hmm. so I did whip out my puffer jacket in like November, or no October. And Ashley yeah. in the training room was like, "What are you gonna do when it actually gets cold? Like, it's why true. are you wearing your puffer right now?" And <laughs> yeah. I was like, "I'm cold." Like, yeah. Um, well, the way that September and October were going this year, it was looking like Thanksgiving was gonna be a cookout, dude, but yeah, then it, got, for real. then it got brick quick. Mm-hmm. So I so, feel that. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I really like it. I think also like. Um, sorry. Mm, last spring, I like got a whatever part-time job, and just like mm. meeting people through that, and like showing like how like 
all the different people like in New York and all the different experiences. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. such a such a trippy. No, it is like such a simulation. That's it's like facts. such a like no, high real, ass thing to. Yeah. I'm not, but like sorry. existential. No, sorry. You're existential. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. Allegedly, allegedly, but like, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. No, but like you know what I mean. Like, like it's just like so like we're all like. I'm not gonna say that. That's like way too. No, nah, honestly, I think you're. I <laughs> you're, think you're, you're talking about. Um, but like, we're like, also different. Doing like different and like things, even all yeah. of us, like it's just like such a different experience yeah. that we're all having within the same place, and it's like mm-hmm. so weird because it's such actually like a small space. Yeah. But everyone's well, doing so many different things. Mm-hmm. Well, you ever heard of this this word right here on my last time? Sonder. So Sonder, I saw it on like. Yes. Yeah, I saw it on like Twitter or something like a while ago. Oh. It's the profound feeling of realizing that everyone, including strangers passing in the street, has a life. As, compl- as complex as one's own. No, mm. and that's like the contrary to like the main character, sh- is like sorry, main character stuff, which is yeah, like facts. on yeah. amplified here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You like see people walking down the street with their like headphones in, and they're like, that and like you're strike. having your moment, yeah. but like it's so weird that you're definitely like going to see someone like in your life and you're like doing something mm. actually. Yeah. Everyone in New York has main character energy, dude. Yeah. 100%. From the way they dress to yeah. the way they yeah. walk. Well, yeah, yeah. and that that then comes with the complex, and so then Mm -hmm. once you leave, then you're like, well, like obviously, (laughs) like you know. Well, I feel that the most. (laughs) Exactly, I feel that the most on the train. Just a random (laughs) young woman (laughs) living in New York, like (laughs) trying to make it, just like trying to get my degree. (laughs) Exactly. Like when I'm on the train, I see like a train full of people. I'm like, yo, y'all really have like lives. (laughs) Like y'all not just like background in my yeah. No, it's weird. Where you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, man. Sounders crazy. Yeah. Okay. That was a good one. Word. Saunders Solid. actually the name of the song. Is it actually? Bye. Wait, no. That's Saunders the group that um, Brent Fias was in before. Oh, I like Brent. Fun Brent. I like Brent Fias. Yeah, I, yeah, know that. I love Brent Fias. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sorry. He's on that tour. Was, that was actually. I know, but I like don't. The only annoying thing about that is like if like I really like an artist, like I don't want to go see them then when they're big because mm. like it's not the same experience that it would be. Like if I saw SZA like in. 2015 mm. I would be so sad but like I don't even like I love her but like I don't know if I'd want to go and see her now because it'd be at a big amphitheater and I would have to ca- pay like eight astronomical grand. amounts yeah, yeah like, no small yeah, venues we're not like, yeah, yeah no like, shout out to Ticketmaster small venues only. No, we're like not Taylor messing with you I know I know come on new says it dropped today though I you got a plan no, oh, you had worry. a plan I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I was listening on my this morning <laughs> Save yeah solid don't worry all right um, um, yeah, Kai, go ahead. I guess we'll I, I, I guess we'll take it back to the volleyball court a little bit. I mean, <laughs> sure. this this has been this has been a fun conversation about New York, um, but just like in general, you know, like highlights, memorable moments, mm. um, any like significant matches that were any like not necessarily a turning point, but just um, you know held uh, a real real significance for you all this season. Um, I mean, uh, right off the bat, like I have one that speaks to me more personally, but mm-hmm. then. Um, I think, like, as a team, there were just – honestly, I think it was more, like, we had a couple of games. I mean, as we said earlier, like, our record doesn't really show, like, that much adversity. But I think as a team, coming into the season with a lot of pressure of, like, such success last year, mm-hmm. there was a – we really wanted to exceed it, and we wanted to perform. And I think we would then – I don't know, we would have some – mental like I think as a team we're a very we fluctuate mentally and I think Mm -hmm. like that is something that we focus on and as a lot as a team as well by like having sports psychologists come in and like really try and help us but I think it was after the Tufts game at Wesleyan this is like a traumatic weekend for everyone on the team yeah um we um we lost and they were just Mm -hmm. such a like frustrating team to play because they were they were good but it was like we know we could beat them Right. And they were like talking through the net and mm-hmm. like just like doing all this stuff. And but we were like so far down that like even if we were like really trying to get out of it, like we couldn't. And so like after that loss, it was just kind of tough. Like the team took it pretty hard. And we just had a whole conversation though of like, okay, this is the point in the season. When was that? That was September 24th. Yeah. So it was like beginning to like going into the middle of the season. Yeah. We're like, okay, well, like we're seeing this happen. Like let's talk about it. And so we had. Um, Haley, Nicole, and I would be like, every time we lose, we have these big conversations with the team. We're like, guys, come on, like, what do we think? <laughs> like, we're like, what's your definition of communication? Like, what do you want what does out that of this look season? Like? Yeah, right. like, you know, we were really trying to build that within each other. So I think that was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And then, like, 
we then beat Wesleyan after, but oh. that game was also like, I don't want to say that it was a monumental game because I was also still kind of like, mm, but that's also on my yeah. personal point. Mm. Um, but for me personally, I really enjoyed playing Emory for the first time in Rochester again because there had been so much like talk about us playing Emory mm -hmm. and it was super like who's going to be better this year yeah. because yeah. Emory, as we know, were really good this year mm -hmm. and they came out with a like, it was a pretty different lineup. Well, they had just like lost one of their main hitters. So we're like mm -hmm. easy, mm -hmm. like this is going to be so fun. Like we, and but like also like we lost Abby Osmus, like. But we also, like, Taylor and Leela and Jess and all the freshmen, like, really stepped up. But Leela and Taylor really stepped up to, mm -hmm. like, fill in that role. Um, You're up 2-0 in that, in that Emory game. But, yeah. So, that Emory game, it went to five. But mm -hmm. it, yeah, didn't, yeah. it didn't feel as a tight. Like, I think we really came together. And we were just, like, playing some clean volleyball. Also, like, mm -hmm. I was – I. I, I played pretty well, and I just hey. <laughs> talk that talk. Yeah. Fifteen kills, fifteen, 15. kills, fifteen kills. Let's go. <laughs> but I just like I don't know. Personally, as a player, like I like it when I like build a narrative in my head. My parents mm. actually hate that I do this, but like I'm like they hate me. Like also I Michael mean, Jordan. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah I like, take that I'm personally. Like, I like. Like, sorry. Um, like <laughs> <You're good. laughs> like I know that coach doesn't like me. Like I need yeah. to like beat Make them, it up. and then like I like. You know, like, do a little, like, stare through the net. Like, you know, like, have a little beef. Yeah. Like, right. which I don't know if it's real or not, but I think now it is because one of the girls on Emory does not like me. <laughs> Emory's program don't like me because of a caption from last year, but we'll get into that. But you know. create these... <laughs> I these sound stories, crazy. Like I create head, these though. stories in my no, head. A lot of high level no. athletes do that for real. <laughs> okay. for that's real. Well, obviously it's a cliche. Like so much part of sports yeah. is mental, but like that's what people are talking about. Yeah. You've got to mm -hmm. get yourself in that space, whether it's yeah, M yeah. or yeah. you know something else. Dami, though, you mentioned her. Yeah. Um, definitely interested in your kind of relationships with the whole team, but specifically <laughs> as person who does the stats sitting at the scores table yeah. whenever you and Dami sub in for each other it's like a party yeah like it's so <laughs> smiles like right. and if you guys are losing like you'll be like, like interview <laughs> um or just like so happy yeah <laughs> so just kind of wonder about you, you the two of yours relationship um yeah. and kind of how that you know came, came to about. be Don't yeah my stomach growling um, <laughs> um Dami and I um so she was last year we were so I was right sides were partnered with a setter and last year I started off with Nicole and then Dami and I were playing together the whole time and like every time we were in we were just like we're both pretty vocal people and I think that's just like how we like to play volleyball and so we would just kind of bounce off each other's energy mm -hmm. and just like off the court we got really close like I mean like I'm a Leo. She's a Sag. You know? <laughs> Two fire signs. Yep. <laughs> Working together. Um, I'm a Sag too. Shout out. Oh my gosh. Sag gang. Happy Sag season. Facts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, They're going to be sick of us. <laughs> but um, anyways, off the court, we got really close. Like we're both in SPS. So, mm -hmm. you know, like our, our class schedule is like SPS is really cool and that we like have a lot of freedom. And so we, you know, go do homework together and do a lot of mm. like studying together, doing For fun sure. things. Um, we just like have a lot in common. I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. anyways. So then, I think also us like playing similarly and like having the same kind of type of experiences and like coaching and like always being you know there's always more you can do and type of thing and like being hard on yourself. I think like we could relate. I mean, I think a lot of people on the team are that way. But like we just like had conversations about that mm -hmm. and how it's like I just want to keep doing more. Like you know mm -hmm. like yeah. it, you know there's always yeah. something you can do better and it's like you're never really like satisfied just corny but um I think coming into this year we were really excited and we wanted to keep building that relationship and yeah. um even though we weren't on the court together at the same time like us subbing in for each other that was our time to like talk about the game really for sure and yeah. so I'd be like every time well so we always talk about it was like when um so the the pair the pairing of the right side and the setter like who pushes the most points and stuff like that when you're mm -hmm. in so it's like who's doing better so we're always like you go in and push or like you need to get us out of this so like yeah. it would be like that type of thing like a mid-game conversation um or like you know just like go like you got this serve like uh -huh. type of thing uh -huh. or like if it's going well like obviously we're both happy and it was also fun because for the um uh for the whole NCAA tournament, we had matching hairstyles, and that yeah. was our good we, luck charm. Kyle and I were noticing that. Yeah, that was our watching. good luck yeah. charm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love Dami. She's my little baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Right. Um, 
I think it was it was last week's episode where Kai and I were speaking. Uh, we were just doing a fall sports recap and just obviously going sport by sport and talking about, you know, really just like the biggest takeaways from those teams. And for women's volleyball, I said that you can never tell if they're up or down by a lot because they're just always having fun out there. Mm-hmm. And it seems like they have the most fun out there out of all the teams. Obviously, there are teams in which that press, they get upset at each other, but it seems like you guys are like always just having a good time. Does it feel like that's the case when you're out there, like in it? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, yeah. obviously in some games, like when you're losing, like that's not fun. But of um, <laughs> I think we have a very optimistic like mm. outlook on it. And I think that comes from just our experience last year and like no one expecting anything out of us and just kind of taking everyone by surprise which was super cool and I think it's a lot easier to do that than to come into a program that like has all this history I mean like this program has history but like for example like within the UAA like Emory Volleyball like they have historically been in the top 25 for the past sure like whatever 50 years like they're known to be good and like to have that expectation like really built in is kind of tough and like that mindset but all of us being like hey we're pretty good like let's just like keep let's ride it let's do it like you know yeah and so I think and then also like kind of finding connections with each other like as people off the court really is like allowing for us to just have more fun on the court and then we're like hey that was like pretty nice play like last year what Abby would always say like after a great play (laughs) she's gonna kill me for saying it she'd be like that's sexy like that's hot (laughs) like and so like we're just like that's so cool like you know Mm -hmm. and so I think like to find it and be like this is like fun volleyball and I think also this year like having it be my last year um I think I wanted to have that experience of it just being like this is it you know like just kind of like go out and like do everything you can and if like it's not perfect it's whatever yeah, do something else it. like do something else in a different area that you can contribute to mm-hmm. but yeah it's fun it's good I mean the coaches help too like yeah. he wants us to have a good time like all the coaches like we have these oh yeah so we have these crystals that we put oh yeah what you got <laughs> this I is got, a I, secret yeah. <laughs> this is a team secret I keep a hermitite on me yeah <laughs> <laughs> hermitite, right? Yeah, yeah yeah so we have um last year we got these crystals of our core values when we were in Poughkeepsie and that mm. like with them we always have them on the bench and we like won mm. uaa champs and all those things yeah, yeah. and so now it's now it's going to be a tradition passed on mm. but like the captain brings it and then like the crystals are right by our coaches on the bench like every game and if we're not playing well and we'll be like spate where are the crystals and like, <laughs> i'm like oh and I like left them in a room and I'm like running during the game to get the crystals and then it's like and then it's like fine but then so actually when we played Calvin I forgot the crystals at home and and like Jenny wasn't up to get them or she was gone or something so like there was nothing I could really do but like we did lose that game um Whose fault was that? Yeah, well, <laughs> mine, my only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way to go. That Sweet. was that Way was my go. bad. Yeah. And and I didn't tell anyone after. I told coach. <laughs> I was like, coach. I was like, coach. I forgot the crystals. Like I can't get them. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, can Jenny get them? <laughs> like the fact that he's like knowing that Jenny can like bring the crystals. The ability, I was like, right. she doesn't want to come to Tanton. Like, yeah. can't um, and then, yeah, we lost. But I didn't. I actually then after the game, I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I forgot the crystals. Like, sorry, we lost. But yeah, so that's like a fun thing. No, that's dope, that we do as no, a team. That's, love that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes and now it adds up that you and Jenny are roommates because you're always you always supporting a lot. Women's volleyball is always supporting women's basketball. Yeah. But last game, the big two three in the stands. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, Jenny. <laughs> nice touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's sure. yeah, she's really good. Now mm. we have this like competition between our teams. So since they went to the Elite Eight, I was like, okay, well now we have to go to the final four. Like, <laughs> and she keeps um, taking pictures of our trophy, <laughs> and she like sends it in her team group chat. She's like, this is what we're working for, guys. Like, come on. And then Motivation. she's like, actually, I want the bigger one. And I was like, I don't get to keep it. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, right. We got I'm it, but right. but Feel yeah. That. So it's mm-hmm. it's a good good relationship. It's for keep sure. pushing each other. Yeah. Uh, you talked about the coaches wanting you guys to have fun out there. Uh, talk about just playing for Coach Brown in general. I know that you got to it a little bit before. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little bit more conversational than it is, like, disciplinary or anything like that. But, yeah, I mean, just talking about playing for Coach Brown and, and you know, what your experience has been like. Yeah. Um, Coach Brown, like I mentioned earlier, he's really awesome. And then he'll just, like, be really open to having conversations about it, about what he's thinking mm-hmm. and and – 
I think as a team this year, as I mentioned, we had these sports psychologists that it wasn't like actually it was a sports psychologist, but it was. I'm so sorry, my stomach is growling, and the I mic is going to pick it up. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, oh. um, but basically, they came in, and it was like showing what type of drivers you have, and it's mm. like, mm. are you competitive? Are you understanding? Are you tr- um, like your anchor? Are you a projector mm. type of thing? Mm. It's kind of weird, but we also learned a lot about each other, and the coaches did it as well, and we learned that like Coach Brown is a projection, and mm. I forget the other one, but it's not competition. He doesn't have competition. None of our coaches have the comp- competitive one. But anyways, so then, like, us learning about him this year as a season was really awesome. And also, like, being a captain was really awesome and, like, having him be, like, you know, like, just someone I could talk to you about yeah. really anything. Like, I, like, after, I would just be like, I'm a little disappointed and blah, 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 or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, him being like, you know, it's okay. Like, it happens type of thing. That was mm-hmm. super vague. Um, yeah. sorry, but, um, <laughs> um, more, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I think he's, he was able to say the tough thing that I needed to say. Cause as I mentioned, I like all of my experience, I had very, um, direct coaches and it would come off kind of harsh, but it's like, also like, sometimes I just need to know and mm-hmm. I need, I need someone to yell at me to be like, get your, you know, what are you doing type sure. of thing. Um, and so, like, I think he kind of adjusted to that, which I really appreciated. And, like, he gave me that direct feedback after me kind of, like, prying it out of him. Um, but, like, I don't know. He's just a cool guy. Like, he's he just, like, wants – he's, like, super goofy. And it's funny because all the other teams in our conference think – He's like really serious because he wears his suit every yes. game. Yep. Because yeah. he'll like have his Lulu matching set on uh-huh. and then like go change and then come out in the suit. And we had the banquet with the UAA teams and they're like, Is your coach really scary? Like, he seems really intense. I'm Not like, at all. No, like, Not at all. <laughs> we make TikToks. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing him yeah. really well, like, <laughs> like Kyle and I do, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yeah. To hear. yeah, it's like really yeah. funny. Um, he, yeah, well. But he's, he's awesome. He's like really smart about the game. Like, I think mm-hmm. as a coach, He's more um, strategic and like he always likes to say like we're playing a game of chess and like the first we really rely first game we always rely on like our scouting. I don't want to spill all the secrets, but no, you good. Um, yeah, no, like he's he's just really smart about it and very tactical. And I think he's you know grown a lot as a coach over the past two years. And yeah. I just really appreciate his honesty and willing yeah. to like adjust to what the team needs. Like I think it happened like midway through the season. He was like, yeah, like I mean we all need to do better. Like we all are accountable. So mm-hmm. I really do appreciate him and like being super honest and sure. vulnerable with us in that sense. Seems like as a captain, he gave you a lot of kind of leeway to lead. I noticed, you know, every time he calls a timeout, he, him and the assistants, um, Amanda and Rachel, shout out to Amanda and Rachel, um, <laughs> would be off to the side and then he would let, I mean, a lot of times it was you, I, I would see <laughs> like going in with the team. Um, and then he would just come in at the end, say a little thing and then, you know, hands in and everything. So yeah. I guess kind of talk about that. What What's your like... First, how do you feel about being like the timeout captain or leader? Timeout I guess, leader. and like, what was your, you know, what's kind of <laughs> your common themes in that? Um, I mean, I enjoy it. I think a lot of the time, I mean, as you guys can tell, I ramble, so I think. No. <laughs> I know it's like, kind of crazy, but um, anyways, um, sometimes I was like, I don't know if I'm saying too much or if anyone is like agreeing with what I'm saying, because sometimes I'll go in there, even if you look at the pictures, people are like. Like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, I was like, let's go out and have fun. Like, and then I'm also like, pick it up. Like, come on. Like, but also, yeah. So it's just like really varied. Um, I think it is an interesting take to like allow us to talk first. I think I I talked a lot, but then also like we would also have like everyone go around in the circle. Mm. Sometimes like if I had nothing to say, I'm like, what are we, what are we thinking? Mm. Because, like, also sometimes, like, I can't say anything. Like, I'm not doing my job where Mm -hmm. I can say anything right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not in the place. Um, Because that is my biggest peeve, pet peeve, is, like, if someone's, like, telling me to do something and, like, they can't do it themselves or, like, they're not doing anything. So, like, I think I tried to keep that in mind, but sometimes it may have gotten a little away from me. But anyways, I think it's it's an interesting take. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens next year. Tell me, we'll do it. <laughs> but take the reins. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's fun. I guess it brings people closer. You talked about um, adjustments before, and 
how Andrew likened it to like chess. Kai talked about that last week where mm-hmm. he was like, yeah, like Andrew talks about how important it is to make adjustments and stuff yeah. like that. Like, were there any matches maybe that you were like, yo, if we really didn't make that adjustment, we're truly taking the L. But like, like, what, like, what are some examples of those adjustments that he has, you know, kind of assigned to you mid-match? I mean, always during the games, like, coaches are going to give you feedback and, like, what you should be doing to fix mm-hmm. and, like, follow the game plan. But um, during the Emory game in Rochester, like, he mm. he provided, like, an answer. He was like, you just need to stop going one more step out and, like, come in and just, like, block the angle. And then, like, I was so successful from there. Yeah. And then um, another game – I'm just trying to remember which game. I can't remember which game, but basically we were getting – Possibly. Anyways, basically we were getting matched up differently. And so we were like mixing up our rotation so we could have different to like go against different people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like when we would do that, either it was like super successful, but then sometimes other teams would see that we would do that. So then they would rotate again too mm-hmm. to like get the same matchup, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I don't know which game that was. I'm, I'm blanking. But like things like that were really beneficial. But also like we would decide like if we should not block anyone. Like he's just constantly like – Amanda and Rachel are like watching what the other team is doing and where they're getting their pluses and minuses as well as mm-hmm. our team. And so by us then seeing their trends added from our scouting report, it then allows us to make those changes. Gotcha. Cool. Um, would you, or what do you enjoy more? A huge kill or a huge block where you just stuff somebody? Ooh. Hmm. That's a tough one. I love my nasty, like, line shot. Like, if I get Lindsay during practice on that, like, that makes my whole day. <laughs> like, but also, yeah. like, in practice, if I, like, stuff Haley or Liv, like, that will make me smile for 10 days. <laughs> so maybe, like, a block. It's just more, like, personal. Right. Like, kills are so fun and flashy, and then it's just, like, mm, you know? But, like, a block is, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You couldn't do that. Yeah, you couldn't like, get, I'm sorry. get past me. Sorry. Yeah, totally. Type of thing. Well, especially when you have teammates that are that good. Well, it's, practice, yeah, I mean, like, it's just, like, fun to then, yeah. like, talk with, like, you know, live through the night and be like, come on, live, like, block me, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, type of thing. <laughs> Menace. <laughs> or, like, during the games, so I'm like, why can't you, like, you block me all the time during practice, but why can't you get her? Like, <laughs> right, right, right. go get her. Yeah, like, I feel that. I like that. Anyways, That's fun. Sorry. That was a little weird. Go get her. Yeah, you're good. Anyways. You're good. <laughs> Kyle, you got anything oh, else? Salisbury game. That was funny. I'm good. Yeah. It's after funny. It's I funny reposted the win, and I was like, classy. What's that? Say it again. Uh, after we won, I like posted the video, and I was like, classy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got a number of women's volleyball teams out in the country that hate me. And really? We mentioned Emory earlier. Salisbury. Salisbury. Uh, you Salisbury. said the word Shut menace, up. bro. You're a menace. That's yeah. fine. I am a menace. Yeah. But we love it. Feel that. Okay. Um, Spaith, you got anything else that maybe we didn't get to ask you about that you wanted to at least just put out there, Speaking address? Oh, yeah. You know, it's free form. Okay, guys. So whatever that might be. Actually, yeah. Yeah, talk um, to us. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Something I've been meaning to address to the whole NYU athletics. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know. Games are fun. How do you guys like doing social media for women's volleyball? <laughs> Who's your guys' favorite team oh, we got at NYU? This. <laughs> we, uh, a student videographer was asked this in, our, in the mic'd up with uh, Lindsay. And the videographer um, smartly said, your team. Uh, if you're asking us in the name of equity, we love them all. We love them all. Love them we all. love you, Violets. <laughs> <laughs> love them all. I, can, I will say, I will say, and this is not, this is not, um, this is a very technical thing, but volleyball stats, because I do the stats for the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Doing volleyball stats is a lot of fun. Okay. I've been doing it for a few years now, and at first it's like I, had, I knew nothing about the sport. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah. what, what, what are we talking about? A dig? What, yeah, what, yeah. what is this? Um, but now I, I actually enjoy it a lot because it's so fast-paced, yeah. um, and keeping up with all the action is fun. So. I agree. I think it's a very fun sport to watch. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think Dan also, like, having him as a new trainer, like, mm-hmm, he didn't mm-hmm. know that much about volleyball. But then, like, towards the end of the season, he was, like, getting really vocal yep. with us. Yeah, and yeah. he was like, come on, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, no, I think once you, like, start to understand it, it's really fun. It's much more fast-paced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on that note, I will say that, like, to the people that have never been to a volleyball match, like, like at least expose yourself to it, both women's and men's. But, like, at least just exposing myself to it last year not like for the first time ever but like kind of just reacquainting with it i was like bruh like this sport is fire like i've really loved watching it i really enjoyed it um i i look forward to going to games yeah so um 
Yeah, I mean, you know, just expose yourself to it, and I and I don't think you'll be disappointed in the least. Yeah, yeah. pull up. Definitely. And the men's and women's games are very different, but oh, very much very so. Fun. Very much yeah. so. Agreed. All right. I mean, yo, I got nothing. Kai, you got I'm anything? Good. This has been space. This has been a lot good. of fun. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Silence behind the violets. <laughs> episode two is in the books. Spaith, appreciate <laughs> you coming on. I know. <laughs> Do her, that party, guys. She's doing her Do own routine right here. <laughs> now we put that rock. Slay, guys. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Okay. Bye. <laughs>